Hello and welcome to Dove Biology. Today we'll be looking at an introduction to environmental science and the concept of sustainability. In order to study environmental science, we need a working definition of what is the environment. The environment is basically everything around us, including both the living and non-living components with which we interact. We are dependent upon the environment for everything, from the air we breathe, to the water we use to drink and for sanitation, um, our shelter, food, and energy. When we study environmental science, we're taking an interdisciplinary approach to study how humans interact with the environment. The main goals of environmental science is to understand how nature works, how the environment affects us, how we affect the environment, and to find ways for us to live much more sustainably without degrading this very important life support system with which we live in. So what does it mean to be sustainable? Well, your textbook defines sustainability is as the ability of the Earth's various systems, humans and their cultural systems, and economies to survive and adapt to environmental conditions indefinitely. Basically, we're finding a balance in which humans are able to live within the confines of the environment and use resources effectively such that uh, humanity can, can exist alongside nature for a long time to come. Now, in order to do that, we need to come up with some strategies. And one thing we know is that nature is centered around the concept of balance and sustainability and so perhaps if we mimic uh, nature's ability to be sustainable we also can be more sustainable so there's four basic principles from nature that we might be able to borrow um, in order to live more sustainably uh, the first one is reliance on solar energy nature uses the abundant perpetual energy source of the sun the sun produces no residual pollution and it's an endless source of energy so if we can find more ways to use solar energy both actively in the production of electricity or hydrogen or passively for the heating and cooling of our homes we could live more sustainably another one is nature relies on biodiversity there are organisms that uh, provide services and produce things um, in the environment. Each organism has a role um, and there's lots of organisms. There's a diversity of living things. So if one happens to naturally uh, go extinct, there's hopefully somebody else there to do its job. So we need to maintain that biodiversity to make sure that there's plenty of living things that are providing those natural resources for us to be able to survive and maintain our economies. Another thing is population control. In nature, living things rarely exceed uh, their maximum amount of organisms that can be sustained in a given area. And even if they do go over that bump, uh, they're always brought back down to um, an appropriate level. Humans, because of medicine and our uh, knowledge of technology, we've been able to really grow as a population exponentially to over 7 billion people. Is that too many? Should we think about some ways that maybe we can uh, try to manage our population so that we're not taking too many resources? And lastly, nutrient recycling. In nature, nothing is wasted. Everything uh, goes back to nature. The first law, uh, or the law of conservation of matter, says that matter can't be created or destroyed. So nature is going to rely on that so that each piece of matter can be recycled. If you've had physics, you might recall that talking about um, all of the matter that is present on planet Earth was here at the formation of our planet. And so the atoms that make up our bodies have been recycled for thousands and thousands of years. Our matter um, has been recycled. And so and when we're producing goods and making waste, we need to consider how we can recycle that and make sure that we're uh, mimicking nature. Now, the key to sustainability is understanding the resources that we're using, and that those resources are what we call natural capital. Now, when we think of capital, oftentimes we think of, you know, uh, Capital One commercials and, and capital in terms of money. 
money that we spend. Well, natural capital are those things that we're going to use, we're going to spend um, in order to maintain our livelihood and our economies. The two big pieces of natural capital are natural resources and natural services. Natural resources are the things that are present in nature or that are produced in nature that we're going to use. Okay, things like air, water, soil, land, the living organisms, uh, minerals, and energy sources. While natural services are the processes, the things that nature does, um, that also is going to produce something for us, like cleaning our air, or making some food, or uh, breaking down waste and recycling that matter. Now, what keeps uh, natural resources forming and natural services uh, do, being produced is going to be the sun. The sun is one of the major driving forces um, to a lot of natural processes. And so we say that natural capital um, is supported by solar capital, so solar energy. Now, as we consume natural capital, uh, as we produce items and, and make waste, we say that the capital is being integrated. We're spending those resources. So we're depleting resources and polluting the environment. And if we're going to be sustainable, we need to find a way, find that balance so that we degrade less of that natural capital and use it more efficiently. So that our ultimate goal then is to create an environmentally sustainable society. One which is able to meet the needs of all people and do it in a very just and equitable manner without compromising our future. So we want to make sure that we're protecting our natural capital. We're, we're saving some of that capital and living off of its income. It's just like if the, you won the lottery and had a million dollars. If you spent all that million tomorrow, you'd have nothing for the future. But if we invested that uh, money, if we put that uh, in the bank and then used the interest, then we could live comfortably. We wouldn't live in excess. Now we want to measure our impact on the environment, how much, how we're degrading that natural capital. So the thing that we use is commonly referred to as our ecological footprint. How much land are we using? How much are we impacting that natural capital? One way that we can look at that is the per capita ecological footprint because each country or each region is going to impact and degrade that natural capital a little bit differently. So if we look at uh, the per person impact, we're going to be able to see how um, a country or a given area is impacting those natural resources. So when we look at um, our ecological footprint, the total footprint, the United States has a big footprint. Um, our share of global ecological capacity is about 25% of the Earth's uh, resources. And in terms of land area, um, the United States isn't very big, but um, we're a very affluent nation, and so we're able to use resources, and we use them very, very well, and we take them from other places as, uh, as well. Um, India, they have a, you know, they're in the top five here, and in part, that's because um, they have such a large population. India and China have huge populations, but per person, their impact is much less than the United States, which is up there number one. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that those are very populous countries. And so when you divide the footprint evenly amongst all the people, um, it seems less, but they're still in that top five. Combined, if we use all of the people uh, in, the, in the world, um, we have exceeded the Earth's ecological capacity. If everyone uh, continues to live like we do today, uh, we're going to need almost one and a half Earths to be able to sustain us. Um, and we only have one planet, so we have to find some way to rein in our impact and live much more sustainably. Experts have identified four basic causes of our environmental problems. At the top of the list is going to be population growth. With 7 billion people on planet Earth and more coming every day, more than are dying, um, 
we have lots of people and each one of those people require resources and they're going to impact the environment and so we have to think about how we can manage our population we use our resources very much unsustainably um, we've become especially in the United States a disposable society we throw so much away that perhaps can be reused or recycled and we can use our resources much more efficiently number three is poverty something that we have to work on. When you have nations which uh, have a low uh, gross national product um, and the individuals don't have a lot of money to spend, it's hard for uh, a person to consider uh, using resources efficient, efficiently and uh, paying for a good disposal of waste when they have a hard time putting food on their table. And lastly but not leastly, we have our failure to include harmful environmental cost of goods in a market price. In other wo words, when a product goes to market, the impact that it had on the environment is not included in the price. For example, if we have a piece of furniture that was produced from wood from a rainforest versus a piece of furniture that was produced from uh, a sustainable forest in the Midwest. Both pieces of furniture may be identical in their form and they will have an identical price even though the wood from the rainforest damaged the environment much worse because it was not harvested in a sustainable manner whereas the Midwestern forest has a uh, sustainable harvest that's associated with it. If the rainforest piece of furniture cost more than the one produced sustainably, a person will be less likely to buy that and that would discourage unsustainable forestry practices perhaps. So if we had to pay for our impact on the environment, it might change how we consume goods. Now there are a lot of different solutions to environmental problems. Unfortunately, there is no panacea. There are some solutions, in fact all solutions, are going to have some sort of trade-off. Solar energy is great because the sun is a perpetual energy source. It's clean, virtually non-polluting. The problem is there are only certain areas which are really optimal for solar energy and in some cases when you're placing that solar panel you might be disrupting a habitat for an organism. Nuclear energy uh, is very low in its carbon emissions, but we have this leftover nuclear waste. How do we deal with that? Wind is a good solution. It's also virtually non-polluting, but it does sometimes emit uh, noises which uh, can be annoying to people. It can disrupt uh, flight patterns for birds, so it's not a perfect solution. People have different views about the environmental problems and their potential solutions. They range from the planetary management worldview, which says that humans are the most important and dominant species on the planet, so we should manage the planet for our benefit. Use those resources until they're gone, and then find a replacement. Let science solve the problems. The other end of the spectrum is what we call the environmental wisdom worldview which says that we're part of the earth. We need the earth, it doesn't need us, so we should manage it appropriately, discouraging waste, encouraging environmental sustainability. A champion of the environmental wisdom worldview was Aldo Leopold, who was a leader in the conservation environmental movements of the 20th century, and he believed that human species should protect nature and not conquer it. He purchased uh, 80 acres in central Wisconsin and put principles of sustainability into practice. He took a tract of land that was overforested and overharvested and restored it. His efforts were he recorded in his book called A Sand County Almanac, which was published shortly after his death. In it, he stated, and the individual is a member of a community of interdependent parts. We're all connected with the earth and so we need to take care of it. So as we shift towards sustainability, it's going to depend upon individual choices because we know that we consume natural capital and as a result it gets degraded. 
So we have to come up with solutions, but each solution is going to have some kind of trade-off. And so we have to decide what's going to be the maximum benefit and the minimal harm so that we can make a difference. And so each person making those solutions is going to make a difference. So over the course of this class, we're going to be looking at our uh, environmental worldview, trying to think about ways that we can live more sustainably and make those good choices so that we can make a difference on our planet.